<laughs> hello, hello. We're gonna start in like three minutes. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Hi. <laughs> Can I? Um... Okay, we're going to start in two minutes. In two minutes, we can start. Hi, JJ Saskia. Good to see you. We're going to talk about the will of God for our lives, guys. The will of God for our lives. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? I'm in my car, so I don't know how the volume is going to be like. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be talking about... You know what? Before I even start praying... Before I even start this, I'm going to... Let's, I'm gonna pray really quickly. Father God Almighty, I pray a wall of fire around this TikTok. I know there's witches and wizards and warlocks that jump in, but I call the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take over this TikTok. Holy Spirit, take over this TikTok in the name of Jesus Christ. I call the presence of the Holy Spirit, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the only true and one God. May his fire block every incantation every hex every hex every jinx be blocked in the mighty name of jesus i seal this tiktok with the blood of jesus thank you elohim thank you adonai thank you the god of abraham isaac and jacob oh hi <laughs> palm springs i'm literally down down the street i am in la so i have to pray at the beginning of my tiktoks and call a wall of fire around it because Things happen. I don't want you guys being attacked. Amen. Thank you, Willie G. Um, okay, so today I want to talk about the will of the Father. I have an hour, so I'm going to be on here for an hour before I have to go pick up the boys. And so instead of running home for 30 minutes, I thought I'll just do a live right now. So we're going to talk about the will of the Father, okay? So I know that in life, all of us have plans for our lives. However, there is plans that God has for our lives as well and it is important that we discover the plans that God has for our lives because that way you're walking in the will of God for your life when you walk in his will you're protected I'm now finding out that having started what God asked me to start years ago is what protects me from whatever people are sending so I just want to tell you guys Yes, Jesus Christ, have your way. That um, if you don't know what your gift is yet, just seek God, seek Him, and seek Him with all your heart, and it will show you exactly what you were created to do. Because all of us have an assignment. And I want to focus on Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse um, 10, verse 9. Jesus Christ is talking to His disciples, and He's saying, Pray in this manner. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So hallowed just means like your name be lifted up in my life. Your name be glorified and honored. Your kingdom come. So the kingdom of God is coming on earth for us. He's the king. And we all know that with a kingship in monarchy, the king's will is usually done. Um, in a kingdom, it's not the people. It's not a democracy. A kingdom is not the same as a democracy. Democracy... They work for the people. The people decide what goes and what does not go. But in a kingship, in a kingdom, the will of the king is what gets done. The king decrees something and it is established. So, <laughs> hi, hi, beautiful. So, we are children of a king. Like, we belong in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, his way goes. Like, his word is what supersedes everything else. Our opinions, our feelings, our just anything honestly so our preferences so if we are if the prayer that Jesus Christ left with us was our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come 
and he's the king we have to be able to accept his will for our lives because he's the king of our lives right we're not our own kings i'm not my own queen yes we are i'm a child of the most high god i'm a child of the king however because he is king his decrees supersedes everything and i want us to understand this i'm now realizing why um we have such protection and such everything is just falling in place because things fall in place when you are walking in the will of god for your life honestly guys the secret is walking in the will of God for your life. Hi. So if you're not walking in the will of God for your life, um, let's say, for example, like right here, you see me because I'm in the frame of the camera, right? Let's say I get out my car and walk out. I'm not in the frame of the picture. And let's say this frame is, my, is the will of God for my life. But I walked out of the will of God for my life and I walk out this car, something can happen to me because I'm out, I'm out of that frame. So the protection comes in when you are right in the will of God for your life. Everything falls in place. Like, your needs are met. Like, guys, <laughs> the peace and joy that comes with following the will of the Father for your life is amazing. Glowworm90. Okay, you have a personal question. Just give me one second. Um... You know what? I will follow you back. That way you can ask me a personal question in the in the message box. <laughs> okay. So the thing is, I'm realizing that when you walk in the will of God for your life, that's when you get the ultimate protection. That's when things fall in place because God because God does not want bad for you. The king loves his children, but the king knows that your own desires and plans won't work out because they're fleshy. They're of the flesh. Does that make sense, guys? Our own desires go against the will of God for our lives. Let's say I am working for public health and I'm doing my own thing. I, I get up at, at 6 in the morning, get to work at 7.30, get off at 5. I'm exhausted. I have a family. I'm so busy. I can't even do this TikTok that you told me to do, right? So I get pushed out of that job so I can get time to be able to do what his will for my life is, which is this. Before, I would say, God, I'm so tired. I can't do this, you know? And he understands. He's a very loving, caring father. However, he will make sure or he will assist you in order for you to be able to walk in his will for your life because in his will for your life is the ultimate protection is where you get the most blessings okay okay miss glow 190 um it's where you get the more ultimate blessings your blessings come because you are walking in the will of god for your life so when I didn't know what the will of god for my life was guys I just went through life like 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 whatever just doing what everyone is doing, chasing the American dream. You go to work, you buy a house, you buy a car, you raise a children, whatever. You know, you go to church every Sunday. But the fulfillment was not there. You know, there was something missing. And that missing part is what we're created to do. Where you feel like something is missing, I need something else. That's the connection with God where you are even though the work of the Father can be tiresome, He gives you the power to do it. And that's where you get the ultimate satisfaction and fulfillment. When you are walking in the purpose of God for your life. If you were created to be a, a, an entrepreneur, to run a business and help churches or help people that are homeless, you're going to get the most fulfillment doing that. If I was created to teach, I'm getting the most fulfillment teaching. Literally, guys, I cannot rest a single day without thinking about posting a topic because he is literally giving me topics like, okay, this needs to be taught, or this needs to be taught, or this needs to be taught, or this needs to be taught. And I get the most happiness, like contentment, knowing that I've done my part today. I did my video today. I did this today. And I can't explain the joy that comes with that. I'm here to tell you, like, whatever you were, if somebody was able to prophesy to you one day and say, hey, you are created to do this, ask God for guidance and do that. Like, just start. Just start. When you walk in his will, you are protected on every side. 
your children are protected your spouse is protected your home is protected it doesn't matter what they send you guys god is going to show you i'm literally i want to say on saturday i was laying in bed taking a nap and i saw literally a, a thing falling on me like hitting me right here slumber i was supposed to come on and do a live saturday afternoon around two but slumber hit me and god showed me that vision and literally shortly after that i fell asleep for like three hours the devil's a liar but then i was like holy spirit help me to get some energy so i can do this live that's how i was able to do it later on doing my hair but literally he's he's gonna fight you but it's not gonna like really harm you it's not gonna really touch you because god will fight, like he'll god will give you a way out of that that hurdle and guys the will of the father for you is for your own fulfillment so you don't go chasing drugs women men um parties concerts i am perfectly content knowing that my father is happy the joy of the lord is my strength i understand that verse now i never understood what that meant the joy of the lord is my strength like okay he's happy how is that my strength no when he's happy because i'm doing the father's business excuse me the father's business is being done he's happy i get strength through that to do everything else in my life hi hi miss divine disruption so the will of the father is for your own good we were created like nothing is by chance in this earth god specifically created you to do something something you have an assignment on this earth all of us have an assignment all of us now people that you see like they're just distraught going from place to place city to city they just can't settle that's because they're missing one aspect of their life you were created for a purpose and that purpose is not fulfilled you won't feel the contentment and the fulfillment that only comes from serving the father his will for your life is to be happy content and have everything else you want but seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything else will follow everything else follows guys i promise you everything else follows so here in matthew 6 chapter i uh, miss disruption um divine disruption we are in matthew chapter 6 verse 9 and we're talking about how jesus christ was teaching his disciples on how to pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name hallowed is lifting up magnifying the name of the lord your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so let's 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 look at heaven for a second so in revelations holy spirit help me holy spirit help me i rebuke every person that's sending an incantation against my mouth and my words right now in my name of jesus christ i send the fire to block it amen all right so i'm literally in the middle of lives i have to fight witches um but um in revelations it's it tells you how heaven is it says that god is on the throne on the right side is jesus christ and in front of them are seven candlesticks lampstands symbolic of the holy spirit because the holy spirit is on the earth he's hovering on the face of the earth right there is a rainbow above the throne there's a river that flows from the throne down and there's the tree of life on each side of the river and then there is 24 elders around the throne room of god and they keep bowing down and laying down their crowns now there's the there is the seraphims also worshiping him and the cherubims it's amazing but in heaven his will is done we were created to worship god and serve him okay because whoever you serve and whoever you worship you will become which is why people that are in the dark spirits and dark arts they become so hardened and prideful and mean and nasty because the devil is mean and nasty whoever you worship you will eventually become and whoever you uh worship you will eventually serve you can't you can start off like i'm just consulting them just so i can talk to my dead granny which is not true you know it's not your granny um and then before you know it they're gonna have to assign you specific things that you have to do in order for something else to happen so whoever you serve whoever you worship you will eventually serve that's a principle in the bible so i rather worship god and that's kind of how i started i was really deep into worshiping him and praising him and worshiping and praising him and then he revealed to me what my purpose was in my life on this earth when you're walking in your purpose 
your life is easier. Y'all, when you walk in your purpose, it is a, God is responsible to make sure that you are, your needs are met. Your life is safe. Your children are safe. Your spouse is safe. Your home is safe. He does all of that. Why? Because you are in the frame. You are in the will of God. Okay? Be in the will of God, you guys. I'm understanding that because before I was like, I used to I used to have a lot of spiritual battles. What happened? What's the difference? The difference is that now I'm walking in the will of God. That's a difference. You are protected. He literally shows you when something is being done at the altar at the moment. So I literally send fire at the moment and they have to stop whatever they're doing. It is safest and most happiest in the will of the Father. And um, Matthew eleven twenty eight to mm, Matthew eleven. Let me go there so I don't um, I don't get the wrong number. Matthew eleven. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Was it twenty four? Yeah, twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight literally says. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Holy Spirit, help me. We're laboring for the world. Literally laboring. You go up in the morning, you go to this job, and you're like just doing all these things. You're giving all this energy and time for one thing, yet God created for this other thing. But Jesus Christ is telling you, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Take my yoke upon you. Yo, I know that ministry is not easy. Walking in your purpose is not easy, but it's safe fast. When you are in your purpose, you are safe. They can't touch you. They can't do anything to you. Okay? My yoke is a take my yoke upon you. Because Jesus Christ came here and taught us, right? Three and a half years of ministry. He taught a lot in three and a half years, right? Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. He's humble at heart, right? And you will find rest for your souls. So if anybody asks you, Prim, how do I find rest for my soul? Good question. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 and 29 tells us, Take up, your, take up my yoke. My, my burden is light. My yoke is easy. You guys... I have never done New Age, but I've seen a list of things I have to do, like uh, uh, align the chakras, um, do yoga, like the list of things I have to do. I was like, I would never do that. That's a lot of stuff. I just have to worship Jesus Christ, praise Jesus, talk to Jesus, and I'm good. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And then if it's for me to come on here and do a video for you guys, he tells me the topic and gives me the verses for it. His yoke is easy, his burn is light. It's his work. I'm just a vessel. I'm just literally here like, hey, I'm here. Use me. What should I talk about today? He's like, okay, talk about this because people are, str people are struggling with patience, being patient. And guys, he sent, he sent back up. He's literally sending us back up right now because, you know, whatever was supposed to come is taking a while, but he's sending back up. But that back up is coming because people are fasting and praying and seeking him and resting in him. Backup is not going to come when you're busy going, God is taking so long. Let me run to this psychic and, and check out why I can't meet my potential spouse. Backup comes. Daniel fasted for 21 days. 21 days waiting for God to come and rescue him and give him some answers. From the first day, God, God heard. As long as you have repented and are washed in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, God hears you. Now, all you have to do is just rest in him, knowing that he has heard you, and just praise and worship. Praise and worship. You guys, it is not hard to praise and worship. When I get up in the morning, I don't do an elaborate thing. I spend, you know how you spend time with your best friend or somebody you care for? That's how I spend time with God. I have a huge blanket, super soft. I have my music going sometimes, sometimes I don't. And I have another blanket I put on myself and I'm just like, God, I'm here. Let's, um, let me read the Bible. Or like sometimes I start with the Bible reading. Sometimes I start with just singing to him. Sometimes I'm just like, let me talk to you or let me address a dream I had. Whatever it is, I'm like, God, I had this dream. What does that mean? And then it will direct me to the scripture. It is a, an organic relationship. But the relationship takes you seeking him first because he's there. He is there and ready for you. God is everywhere. 
He wants you. He wants your heart. He's not a vending machine, you guys. Like, God, I want this husband. Let me get this husband and bounce and go to the Bahamas and just live my best life. No, he wants a relationship with you. And so the, the time it takes for you to have to cultivate the fruit of the spirit, the time it takes for you to have to figure out how to deal with people, how to wait on God, is for you to realize that you need God. You need God. You need Jehovah Jireh. When you come to the point where you're like, I am done because I cannot do this in my own strength. The death that is coming on this earth is no joke. You need God to survive this. If you don't have God, just pray that if you're somewhere where there's somebody who actually believes in God and his power, they can pray for you. If you don't have someone praying for you, or you don't know how to pray yourself, or you're not a child, you need God. Okay? This monkeypox stuff that's happening is the next pandemic, you guys. FYI, you need Jehovah Jireh to protect you. You need the blood of Jesus Christ to protect you. You yourself, you can't protect yourself. You didn't give yourself breath. You didn't create yourself. You don't know how many hairs you have on your hair. I mean, on your head. You don't know if you're going to be alive the next hour. You do not know this. People are dropping dead every second. Okay? So if you don't, if you're not in Christ Jesus, if you're not rested in him, truly rested in him you won't make it out which is why i'm saying we have to know that the will of the father is for you to be healthy good protected everything okay get out of your own selfishness we are selfish by nature get out of the selfishness the gift god gave for you is for other people my gift of teaching is not for me I can teach myself. I can read myself silly all night and know the entire Bible front to back. But that's for me. And I already get edified from the Holy Spirit. So when he teaches me something or when I learn something in a different situation, he's taught me that it's not for me. It's for you guys to learn. My experiences are for you guys to avoid certain pitfalls. So I share being vulnerable, not for you to be like, I mean, you can laugh. It doesn't matter. I don't even care, girl. I don't care, guys or boys. I don't care who, who laughs because it's not for me. My experiences are not for me. I'm realizing that now. Every time I ask him for something or as an answer to something, he takes me through the process of that. So I don't come here and show you theory. I show you practical. Theory is theory. You know how you go to school you're in med school, whatever. They teach you, this is the lung, this is the heart, this is the brain, this is da 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 And then you get on the floor and an actual person comes there with like a, a bullet shot through, like maybe through here and you have to figure out where the brain is. What's... That's practicality. You need to figure out how to save this person's brain, not to harm their spinal cord, but keep them alive and still do surgery and then still keep the blood pressure properly, keep the heart rate in check. That's a practical part of it. So when I'm asking the Holy Spirit for a certain question and he puts me through something, it's so that way you can teach others. You knowing what it is, is great primrose. However, I need other people to know how to navigate this. We don't have time for all of us to go through the same thing. We don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. There's no time for that. We need to grow up. We're done with the milk. We're done with, it, with the baby food. In, in, in the word, we need to grow up and learn the meat of the Bible. The meat of the Bible is we have to walk in the will of the Father for our lives. Figure out what you like to do. What do you enjoy doing? Do you enjoy reading? Do you enjoy teaching others? Maybe that is what God gave you because your desires are from the, are from the Heavenly Father. God gives you, your gift is usually tied to what you enjoy doing, okay? Um, if you are like an, a, a doctor, and you love the human body you just love the human body and being in hospitals god will assign you to be the one to pray for the sick people to come out and be able to go home safely because there's witches wizards and warlocks in hospitals trying to drink people's blood and killing them in there doing night shifts okay so whatever you enjoy doing usually that is what your gift is based in because god gives you like he gives you you usually enjoy what you're doing. Your gift is usually an enjoyment. Like, I love going through the scriptures. I love finding, like, little 
patterns for you guys i love doing the prayers for you guys because i enjoy that stuff i enjoy it i was i would during nursing school i was a tutor like i'll tutor people for free like come here i'll show you how the neurological system works i'll show you how the circular system works i'll show you how this system works i'll show you how i'll teach you all the bones in the body i'll teach you all the muscles in the body that's what i enjoy doing i understand at that time that i'll i love teaching but i'll just freely teach people about bones you, you just come to me oh i'm having i'm struggling with this system what's going on girl let me tell you about the kidney and i'll just tell you everything you you more than you even want to know about the kidney more than the test i'll tell you everything about the kidney just because i loved i'll go further through the books go past the books more resources just to make sure i understand the kidney in and out okay so that's how i know however i didn't know exactly what my gift was until people say, started saying um you're gonna be dressing people and i'm like what do you mean by dressing people i don't understand what dressing people means and it took me digging in the word of god for myself to realize what dressing people meant it is in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10 as 61 verse 10 talks about um dressing dressing um the people of god in salvation clothes let me go there let me go there so i can read it verbatim but as six one is what god showed me after i had gotten um prophesied to that i was supposed to be dressing people and i was like i don't like fashion i, I mean i don't mind wearing nice clothes but i don't like fashion like that where i'm gonna be sewing things for people i couldn't see how me sewing clothes could relate to me helping the kingdom of god i was like how is me i guess like deborah deborah was so close for people and i'm like but i don't like sewing clothes yo i have a sewing machine if anybody really wants it and they live in la i can give it to you guys i have a brand new sewing machine that i use twice in my i've used it twice because i was like god this makes absolutely no sense i have all the things you need to sew i have all the i got all this clothing all this fabric and i was like i'll do it D like really pissed off y'all pissed off i'm like how are you gonna give me a gift of sewing fashion i don't i don't that makes no sense lord that makes absolutely no sense but what god wanted from me was primrose dig deep search me and you'll find me i searched for him i found him and this is what he told me as x1 verse 10 i'm telling you guys because you need to figure out what you were created for you weren't created to be here get married have kids and do all this that's additional to your calling that's additional to your calling you are to raise godly children you are to have a godly marriage consecrated marriage but that's not all there is to your life okay your life was created for a purpose you're a mom you're a businesswoman you're doing all this great fantastic but what else lord what else i know you 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 brought me here for a purpose okay so six uh, is that six one verse ten says i will greatly rejoice in the lord my soul shall be joyful in my god for he has clothed me with garments of salvation he has clothed um covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels so my assignment is whoever doesn't have their salvation get them to get salvation or help them assist them in finding salvation right that's one the second one is those who have salvation cover them with the robe of righteousness righteousness is the way of the lord his ways not our ways not opinions not the pastor said not the reverend said not the pope said no righteousness is god's way of life his way for us his will for us is to be in his will his plan all of us guys have a plan all of us are supposed to be within the plans of god like you see this bible there's a book in there's a book in heaven that is has your name on it and you're supposed to be a certain place in a certain time no stress but you're supposed to be at 30 you're supposed to be here 25 is supposed to be here 50 is supposed to be here are you meeting your goals are you meeting your milestones in heaven father's will his will not your milestones his milestones for your life because the way you get to that is seeking first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness his righteousness y'all and then everything else will be added to you okay his will for your life is not the earthly things that you see around here i love my family to death i love them i love my husband i love my little boys however i guess i get the most fulfillment doing his work my father's business and they know 
my son did like a Mother's Day thingy, and the, in the book he put like everything. What does your mom likes to read the Bible? What is she like doing? Singing God's songs? Like even he knows, and he's a little boy. Like let let your godliness go before you, and the glory of God go behind you. Listen to the Bible, okay? Be about your father's business, you guys. Because this is where I have found the most protection. I don't care if you are like the high, the, the devil's bride. You can't touch me. Because I am in the will of the father. That is where the ultimate protection comes in. When you are in the will of the father, it's like, you see this screen right here? You know, you can see me right here. I am in the will of the father. I am protected in the will of the father. Everything else follows. His protection follows. His love follows. Thank you. And God is amazing, you guys. It's amazing how much fulfillment he gives you, how much joy you get, how intimate it is when you can talk to him any moment. You're like, God. And then sometimes, honestly, sometimes, sometimes it's quiet. Like this morning, I was like, man, you're so quiet this morning. And then I kind of, I was praying in the spirit you know in tongues and i laid down and they gave me some um philippians 4 19 i was like oh okay thank you it kind of flashed in my mind i was like okay thank you so i looked it up like he's silent sometimes but he's still there he's just waiting for you to be quiet guys jeremiah 30 verse 3 says call unto me and i'll answer you and show you great and mysterious things you don't know there's so much he wants to show you there's so much in you there's so much in you guys. Let's not waste our gifts that were given to us. I do want to find the scripture that says, um, uh, the, the verse is kind of like, um, behold, I see the, the book that is written of me. There's a book, the volume of the book that is written of me. If you could just Google something like that, like the volume of the book, excuse me, the volume of the book that is written of me. There's a book in heaven with your name on it and there's things you're supposed to do for the kingdom of god everything's supposed to accomplish everything you're supposed to have because honestly once you've done the kingdom of the kingdom work he adds on to you he gives you these early things that, but the thing is you won't care you won't care about this car you're like whatever i don't care about this car it doesn't have your heart christ has your heart that's why it's a seek for the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and everything else will follow because once he gives you that big house these cars and all this stuff you won't care about that you will still be like i'm craving your presence lord i'm craving to talk to you i'm craving our communion i'm craving you elohim adonai that's why it is seek first the kingdom of heaven seek first his kingdom his righteousness that way these earthly things don't take you because once the earthly things take you, you're going into physical. You're going to your five senses, which is like devilish things. Oh, I need to feel a certain way. Oh, I need to do that. Oh, I need to hear from God today. I need divination. Divination, y'all. It's not okay. We need to be in the will of the Father. The will of the Father for our lives is that we, we do our purpose. No one was created to just walk through life meander through life and then die no one now the thing is not everyone discovers their purpose because people aren't willing to give up and submit their flesh like so my question to you guys is are you willing to submit your flesh like are you willing to let his will be done in your life not your will his will be done in your life right because the, back to matthew where we were matthew 6 it says our father who art in heaven hallowed be your name thy kingdom come on earth as, as, as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. His will, you guys. His will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. So there's a will. There's something in heaven that you have to do. And we want that will of the Father to be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, there's spiritually speaking, there's all these things you're supposed to do for the kingdom. There's people waiting to be saved through you. I'm not going to reach everybody because you have assignment. You have certain people that you said, I don't see. I don't see everyone. I live in LA. I don't really go out like that. I don't. So his, you know, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, you have all this, you have a book with your name on it. Behold the book, the volume of the book that is written of me, right? There's a book with 
your name on it things that are supposed to be done and now there's a grave grave sites just people dying with gifts We're supposed to do all this stuff that nothing was done but they chase all the cars fast cars i'm, I'm only saying like these things because like it's la and people are very like superficial fast cars fast motorcycles this this and this and this hollywood bollywood guys but no one's happy they're like why are you so happy i'm like um i don't know i'm just i have jesus and they're like jesus makes you happy I'm like jesus christ is the ultimate the ultimate fulfillment he's it he is it because the peace that you get with christ you guys i can't even explain it i can't explain it i can't explain it um let me see i'll start answering some questions yes the book of life but there is a scripture that says um there's a scripture that says i come behold i come though i behold the book the volume of the book that is written of me so there's a book where things are written in there that you're supposed to do and i'm just happy that i finally like figured out like with the help of the holy spirit you guys it wasn't my own doing i was just like frustrated like i don't want to do this fashion thing it doesn't make any sense and holy spirit through me pushing into him going i just want to know more of you i want to get to know you guys just reading the bible was enough read the bible honestly tell yourself i'm gonna read a chapter every single day read a chapter intentionally read a chapter not like read a chapter scroll through my phone see what's going on, on instagram read a chapter scroll through facebook no, no 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 switch everything off put it on silent mode and read a chapter then write down what did you get from that chapter like what can i learn from this holy spirit what can i learn from this chapter and literally certain scriptures will just jump out at you like certain it's almost like it gets highlighted for you I don't, know, I don't know how to describe that but it just gets highlighted for me highlighted for me and that's the one that we like he's like we're focusing on this i'm like okay what can i learn from this and if he has not if i feel like at that point it's not talking to me because i've i already know that particular topic or i've overcome that particular hurdle then it's for you guys that's when i come on and so like okay this scripture is for da 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 but it's amazing just read the bible he doesn't contradict his word never that's why i like and i know there's people on here on tiktok talking about the book of enoch guys just this bible that's all you need i promise you i have read the first page of the book of enoch out of curiosity but i got trust us for that like that's not the bible prim read the bible if god wanted the book of Enoch to be part of the Bible, he would have put it in there. He's almighty. He's unknowing. He's great. He is, after all, God, right? So if the if the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if my God wanted the book of Enoch to be part of the Bible, he would have put that book in here. No, like, no man can stop God from doing anything, right? Because there's always a willing vessel. There's always a willing vessel to help him. So I've told you that like God is a spirit, right? And it requires a human vessel to work on this earth for his will to be done, right? So he, there's always a willing vessel looking to submit their will to God's will for his will to be done on earth, right? So there's no way that that book not make into the Bible if God had wanted the book of Enoch to be part of the Bible. So everybody trying to bring in the book of Enoch like it's Bible, it's not Bible. It's not stick to the 66 books that he put in here and call it a day there's so much information here there's so much meat in here that once you've gone through it i go back to certain scriptures and i still get even more revelations from it there's no way you need an extra book there's no way we need anything supplement with no 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 no, no. that's distractions that's confusion that's extra stuff that we don't need in our lives right now we don't need distractions do not get distracted do not get distracted. I think that's it for me. I want to talk about the will of the Father and how people who are most frustrated are always outside of the will of the Father for their lives. Right? So if you're, if you're frustrated, are you in the will of the Father for your life at this point? 
Just assess that. Father, am I in your will? And then always say, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done for my life because you give him like relinquish your will okay relinquish your will say god your will be done because it's a spirit and you're human the spirit cannot he as a spirit cannot um force you you have to come in covenant with him he is god however he still requires your your covenant with him for his will to be done i know it seems crazy He's God, but he still required Noah to believe him. And then Noah built that ark so Noah and his family and all those two by twos could be saved. Okay? Even though he's God, he still required Abraham to leave her, his country, the Chaldeans, come in covenant with him. And then his will was done on earth. He is God, however, he still required Joseph to go through some turmoils. Right? Joseph to save the, the, the Israelites, 75 people from, you know, from his household and then the rest of Egypt. He is God, but he requires a human vessel, a willing human vessel to relinquish their will for his will to be done on earth. So I need you guys to please find out what your, what is your gift? What do you enjoy doing? What did God deposit in you that no one else can have? No one else has your gift, you guys. No one else can can explain the gospel the way you can explain the gospel. It's your your way is always unique to you. There's only one you. It doesn't matter if you're a twin or you're a triplet. It doesn't matter if you're identical twins. Still, your way, your gift is particular to you. Okay? So if all of us just you know come together and go into the will of god guys this is it's gonna go smoother the body of christ needs so much more okay relinquish your will guys relinquish your will y'all uh, <laughs> it's true other things are useless they're worthless you're right miss miss omimi I go to uh, Seventh of God. I go to Five F Church, and I know. Let me talk about this right now. Let me talk about this. It's gonna get awkward for a second. I'm gonna be vulnerable. I know there's a bit. There's been a bunch of TikToks going around about Catherine Crick. Okay, that is my pastor. That's a person that God led me to go to her church. I told God when the pandemic happened, I am done with churches because the church I had been going to was talking about the book of Genesis for like a whole year. We were in Genesis. We never left Genesis, guys. And I was just like, I'm, do I'm done talking about Jacob and Esau. Like, I'm done. And um, I wasn't getting anything from it. I was going there for coffee and donuts every single Sunday with my entire family. So I told God that um, because 2019, I, I started reading myself, like really reading myself and understanding and relations. And I was like, okay, God, I love this. I love this. I won't have to go to church. I'm done with church. Praise God. I got this. I got this thing. You know, you and I, we got this. But I did tell God that I'm open to a church if you do the legwork for it. That meant that God had to find a church and tell me to go to that church. I wasn't going to put any effort forward. And it's exactly what happened. My sister, was, she lives in a different state. She was in that state and there was like a crusade or a conference of some sort. And they told, uh, Catherine Crick was there. And um, she told me, there's somebody in LA. And I'm like, no, there isn't. I, I, I mean, I wasn't looking, but I just said, there's no one in LA that is really being led by the Holy Spirit. That's what I told her. And she's like, well, no, there is somebody in LA. And she told me the name. She says 5F Church. And I Googled it. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. They, you know, they meet outside. That's great. Let me check it out. That Sunday, the devil did everything to like stop me from going. So my close friends, um, family friends, decided that we should take all our children to the beach. Guys, we live in LA. There's a bunch of beaches. But they're like, let's go to the furthest beach. So we went to the furthest beach. So I ended up taking two cars. My car, my husband's car. That way we could just separate and the church was starting at like 3 p.m so we went i went you know after the beach i basically went in my beach clothes um i had like a hat i had like another throw on that way i could be like decent in church y'all holy spirit was present there 
And I said, I asked God that night, is this the church woman to go to? And he gave me a dream confirming that this is the church I should go to. So I've seen multiple videos, the scandal, all that stuff that came out on Facebook and stuff like that. I was just watching because when God tells you to do something, I don't care if my own mother came to me and told me, don't go to this place. Uh, she She's tied with, uh, I don't even know the person's name, da, 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 who's a wizard. It's not true. It's just not true. It's not true because the devil works in division. That's how the devil works in division. I go to church every single Sunday and uh, we worship in spirit and in truth every single Sunday. Every single Sunday, this lady proclaims the gospel of truth proclaims jesus christ gives god jesus christ the glory every single sunday so it broke my heart and people come on here saying oh have you seen her some i think his name is like davy or something and um for me i was like if god plants me here that's where i'm going that's what i told you guys work out your own salvation with fear and trembling because if you try to to attach yourself what was that 10 years ago let me think so 10 years ago i 2012 i was in university i used to drink wine yeah 10 years ago people like, like all the religious people would be like condemning right now going oh yeah you drink wine and i don't do it anymore because i got convicted for the holy spirit convicted me the holy spirit did his job and told me prim drinking wine is going to open you up to the spirit of addiction so i stopped doing it however everybody else um that came on you know i saw tiktok so i was like wow this is so wild and it wasn't just people that were regular people you know you know just kind of like going with the wave of the trending news it was pastors also that's why i stopped listening to a lot of pastors because i'm like there's no way the holy spirit discerned and told you to do this there's no way the holy spirit told i'm gonna have to say her name told jenny weaver to do what she did that's not the holy spirit that's not the holy spirit absolutely not the, the holy spirit is gentle and kind and humble at heart so that's why i stopped following her too because i even i so i actually sent jenny weaver a message saying that is not how you will conduct something like that if 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 your concerns were legit that's not the approach that god told us there's a formula in the bible on how to approach things like that that's not the approach obviously um del deleted my comment deleted deleted what i had sent her and it's fine i don't take it to heart but obviously that convicted her if you're going to delete something i'm sending you that's convicting you but it's heartbreaking to know that there's a move of god going forth people are literally putting down their lives for christ jesus putting laying it all down saying god your will be done on earth through me and people come and crucify that person why is everyone crucifying the person that's flying around every single every, every week she flies around I, I think like three different places just to preach the gospel and then be back in la to preach to us basically and even though through her messages um there for people who are just like new believers i get more out of spending time with god but i go there because god planted me there i asked god for a place that was glorifying jesus christ and being led by the spirit of god services there are for about three to four hours we're there for like four hours four hours i get there at 1 p.m like 1 20 it starts at 1 but i get there at like 1 20 and we're out at like 4 4 or 4 30 because people are getting delivered from demons every single day like every single time we meet people are getting delivered from demons and you can't just tell somebody who's like in bondage sorry we have to go <sighs> that's my that's my that's my pet talk pep talk about that and that's why i don't follow people like that like i can't i can't if god tells me something i have to go what god says if you if you come to me and says prim that the car that person there is a murderer but god told me that person in there has my heart they are humble at heart they're serving me i'm going to go with that person regardless of what you tell me because god is not a, a man to lie no son of man to repent I'm not into trends. I don't do trends. I'm not on TikTok for trends, for likes, for follows. Nah, man. I'm here because I was sent here. I wasn't. I told you guys before. I'm not a camera person. I, I, I love just being, spending time with myself, reading my books, doing my own thing. But God had different plans for me. And wanting to walk in his will for my life requires me to be obedient to his 
whatever whatever gadget he wants me to use i'll use that gadget whatever website wants me to use i'll use that website okay yeah so that's that so now you know i go to 5f which is katherine crick's church and that's yeah if you i can't demons don't cast out demons y'all like that's like demons do not cast out demons that's like not and jealousy is a deep jealousy is a deep 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 thing that the devil uses in, in christian people like christ believers they get jealous of someone and instead of like taking it to christ and saying god i feel jealous right now because this person is doing better than me on tiktok or something i don't know they they start to let the devil they let it harbor and let it infest their hearts and the devil uses that ground they're like, oh yeah, but I believe in Jesus Christ. No, but the devil is using you to divide the church of God. You can be a believer, but still be used by the devil. Which is why I'm always like, guys, create in me a clean heart, oh Lord. And renew, renew the right spirit within me. The right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, oh Lord. And renew the right spirit within me. That means another spirit can be in you. And a lot of believers have gone through that gone through that i'm no exception so i have to make sure i ask that i say that prayer every day if i'm looking at somebody in a funny way i have to say holy spirit create in me a clean heart oh lord and renew the right spirit the right not the wrong spirit the right spirit within me there's no way i should be competing with somebody else because competition is for the dark arts the people in the world compete we don't compete because all of us are serving one king jesus christ okay okay let me see all of that to say that's where i go to church um we need to lopez let me see i think i'm missing part of your question i am so sorry sweetie hold on one second so we need to lopez you said you don't socialize you're shy girl let's rebuke that spirit of shyness very controlling partner so just come against that spirit in your marriage so don't cast it out of them. Cast it off your marriage. Father God Almighty, I break the controlling spirit, the Jezebelic spirit off my marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Break it off your marriage and he will start to change. You will see him changing. He, he might start having diarrhea. He might start throwing up because that it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He might start reacting like, because most of those spirits hang out in the belly. And so he might start having diarrhea. And if he's like, oh, I feel uh, I feel dizzy, I feel weird. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, I'll get you some soup, some water, whatever. But break it off your marriage. The more you break it off your marriage, the weaker you, you're weakening that serpent off your marriage. And it's going to get better. So if you have a controlling partner, y'all, break it off their marriage. Because you are in covenant with that person. You have authority on that marriage, on that covenant, to break whatever you don't want on it. You should not be controlled. You should not be getting manipulated. Submit one to another. Now, um, I, I'm aware that my husband is my head, the head of the family, right? But he also understands that we are uh, a partnership and we work together. Like he's very understanding. You guys, in order for that for us to get here where we are, it took um, rules and boundaries were made while we we're dating and then once we got married rules and boundaries were made for that to be to happen you have to um facilitate what kind of marriage you want to have okay this is a no-go name calling is a no-go this like you have to make certain you have to speak certain things otherwise it seems like you're okay with it the person thinks they can walk all over you like a, like you're a doormat no ma'am no sir we don't do that here we don't call people names same rule applies to our children nobody calls anybody a name outside of their name nobody um if you're angry and you need to get some steam off go into another room and decompress when you are ready to talk ready to talk without cussing somebody out then come back in the room and let's talk you have to set certain things in place for a healthy wholesome home okay you have to make an effort with that like um yeah like that, that's how i that's how we did it yes thank you so much thani b that thani 60 and in thy book all my members were written psalms 139 verse 16 hallelujah 
Okay, so you can, um, Miss Juanita Lopez, just talk to whoever you see. Like, if you are a mom and you are around moms, just talk to them about Jesus. Just like, hey, do you, do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Uh, that's how I ask. Like, my other question I ask is, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? I know it's very dramatic. It's very dramatic, but it's very true. If you were to die tonight, where would, do you know where you would go? People don't like thinking about death, but it's honestly, it's a life or death situation. Because when you die, you have to go somewhere. It's either hell or heaven. It, there's no like in between. There's no limbo. There's no purgatory. All that Catholic made up stuff is wrong. Two places, heaven or hell. That's it. So if you just ask them that, girl, they'll let you know how they are and then sometimes if you care for this person and you really want them to go to heaven but you know they're, they're having a block because they've done occultic practices bind the spirit that's blinding them because there's a blinding spirit that blinds them it's almost like a veil over their eyes the spiritual eyes so you say i bind that spirit that's blinding you right now in my name of jesus christ and then change the subject and then when you go back to that subject of jesus christ they'll be more willing to accept him Kevin Mestro Penal, hey, um, I respect your beliefs, but I know that God exists because <laughs> I've had so many encounters with God that like I can't even, I've never seen Jesus Christ, but I've had all these other stuff and I feel like whenever Jesus Christ appears to people, those are the people that really need like dramatic encounters with God, like the Muslims who appear to them, like, like appear to them in their dreams and visions. For me, it was like, I'll just feel the force of the Holy Spirit, like, take, like, just Holy Spirit, come to me. And I'll just feel like, like the flood of love and grace and fire all at once. Like, I can't. So God does exist. And I hope and pray that God um, touches you one day. Thank you so much, Danib. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, Juanita Lopez, don't memorize. Don't memorize. So I have a... <laughs> I actually have it with me today. I have to go soon. Yeah, it's almost five. I have to go soon. But um, I have a, I have like three different ones. But I have a place where I write. And I have a pen. I always have pens. If you're, if you're in the medical field, you have to have a pen wherever you are. I have a pen. I have pens all over. But... If I if I have a scripture, let's say this morning, and I don't always write it, but I did it. I did this like two hours ago. So I'll write like, see, write the date, and I'll write the scripture that the Holy Spirit gave me this morning, right? Philippians four nineteen, and I'll write the entire scripture verbatim from the Bible, and then I'll write what is coming to mind. So what I wrote from that was. If the sparrows are taken care of, how much more are you? God will take care of you. Trust him. He is trustworthy. And this one was for you because I already know I trust God. Like wholeheartedly, I trust him with every ounce of my being and beyond. I trust him with everything. But this was for you guys, which is why I, I had to make that video, Philippians 419, before I went to work. I was like, let me make this video real quick. Um, and Philippians 419 says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by christ jesus so i write down the scripture that comes to mind and i'll make little notes about it and the notes are thoughts that come to me because the sparrows being taken care of is a scripture it's another bible verse so holy spirit will give you scriptures that connect to other scriptures so let scripture explain scripture i hope that makes sense so instead of me putting my own words in there he'll give me another scripture to tie into what i am thinking or talking about okay so not don't memorize you don't have to memorize because the holy spirit will remind you of the scriptures if you expose yourself to it it's almost like you're diving into a pool right you're gonna be wet when you come out you can dry off but in this spiritual sense is when you dive in the word of god and you come out of the word of god something stayed and you don't have to worry about where it is because the holy spirit will remind you of it in the right moment and then when you when he tells you scripture like uh, philippians 4 19 at that moment speak that word for my god will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus that's a rhema word so you just say that because it says he looked at his word and fulfills it that word goes forth 
and that word was for you guys okay so don't worry about memorizing just read his word and in order for you to kind of remember what you're reading be intentional about what you're reading write down what does this verse tell me right now like when it says all things or when it says like some things just make a note of certain things in the scripture let me see let me go to an, a scripture and i'll explain it really quickly let me go to proverbs because proverbs is like a really good um explanation because the book of wisdom okay so proverbs 18 verse 24 says a man who has friends must himself be friendly but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother so what that one tells me is if you don't have any friends you most likely unfriendly because you must be friendly to have friends it's it's scriptural i'm not saying about the time because there's, there's a point in a, a christ believer's life where we have to go through the isolation period where god is like pruning you and pruning you and pruning you and pruning you i'm not talking about that phase i'm talking about are you approachable as a person so so uh, proverbs 18 24 says a man who has friends must himself be friendly so if you don't have any friends that is telling me that you are not a friendly person the next the next um so b is like but there is is a friend who sticks closer than a brother so there's certain friends that are so close to you that you can confine in them more than you could confine in your own brother so you would like read them like okay so a man who has no friends must be himself uh, a man who has friends must himself be friendly all right so what i'm getting from this is that if i have no friends that means i'm not approachable i'm not friendly i don't say hi to people i ignore people that's how you kind of like god what can i learn from this hmm if i have no friends i must be ignored if my friend over there who keeps complaining that nobody likes her is complaining again that she has no friends but the bible tells me a, a person with friends must be friendly that means she's unfriendly and that means she's not approachable that means she's a common denominator in all the friendships every friendship she has falls apart who's the common denominator her that means she's unfriendly and that's how you read the scriptures so then in uh 24b says but there is a friend who sits closer than a brother now your brother could live in alaska my brother my siblings and i have lived in different countries Right, so at one point, my my sister was in New Zealand. I was in uh, I was in London, and my brother was in like freaking Austria. Right, they're not gonna help me if I need try if I need something. Right, so my neighbors in London could help me better. So they would be the person who sticks closer than a brother. So I could easily go downstairs and ask my friend David and his wife to take care of our son, so we can go on a date. Right, a friend who sticks closer than a brother because they're right there. They're close to me. Versus my sibling who's in New Zealand or another sibling who's in Austria. So that's how the scripture is. What can I learn from this? Okay, sometimes your brothers are way further than you. We don't, I can't relate to them because they're in different stages of their lives. They're doing their own thing. I'm over here. I'm a, I have a family. I'm around people who have families. Does that make sense? That's how you read the Bible. Um, that's how I read it. Let me say that. That's how I read it. So I see what can I learn from this particular verse? What can I get from this? Okay. <sighs> Mr. Kevin, Master of Banel. I'm not here to just, you know what? I can defend Jesus Christ because I love just with all my heart. But I can't debate um what who did what to the Bible when where. I don't I don't care for that. And I actually have a disclaimer video on my like on my page that says I'm not here to debate scripture and Bible and all this. I'm not. The word of God, I am here to obey the word of God. I, I obey the scriptures. I don't debate the scriptures. Whether somebody plagiarized a one verse, it's still the, the word of God. It works for me. It's worked for me. I have testimonies by using the word of God. Give me a testimony by not using the word of God. I don't have a testimony by using the universe because the universe was created. I don't have a testimony by using a tree because a tree is created. I can chop it down. If I have power over something, how can I trust something I have power over? How can I trust a car that I can wreck tomorrow? How can I trust them? Listen, y'all. I got to a point in my life where I was like, I need something higher than myself. Something that I can't touch. That's where I got to my walk. That's how I drove into Christ. Like, I need you, God, because you are... 
you aren't <laughs> I don't know how to explain this to you guys but if I have access to a tree why would I give honor to a tree that could chop down tomorrow that could be burned down tomorrow if I have access to a universe people fly there all the time listen the Word of God this is miraculous this gives me life this gives me fulfillment this is all i want if i didn't eat anything for 24 hours and i would just read the bible i'm fulfilled you know why because my spirit is filled my spirit is nourished i am good now if you if you have um another thing that you need that helps your spirit be built up more power to you but you cannot convince me i'm the wrong person let me just start like you wasting your time with me this one you wasting your time like i no one no pope no priest nothing not even my own mother who birthed me can convince me the bible is not real that the bible is not god's word okay so don't waste your time kevin god loves you but don't waste your time you this is the wrong person i am so sorry i am so sorry yes i love that not by my not by power but the not by my not by power but the, by the spirit of god you guys his spirit gives you so much strength sometimes i look back and like i don't know how i did all that the spirit of god was with me the spirit of god was with me studying is not going to get you anywhere studying the word of god will get you somewhere studying the word of god will get you somewhere but debates and these like worthless talks you're just wasting your energy and i don't like wasting i don't care about horos i don't no i don't care i do not care sir you have the wrong the wrong tiktoker miss anubis or mr anubis i don't i don't i don't christianity started with the bible tells me that on the day of pentecost the holy spirit came upon them jesus christ told them don't go anywhere until i send you a helper once they gave they got the help which is the holy spirit they went out to spread the gospel the good news of christ that's how christianity started and i'll keep you at that holy spirit is a person with a will and emotions i know um oh miss servant to god they were t attacking her because something about her her um her spiritual father whatever but i don't even do spiritual father spiritual mother stuff i don't i don't care for all that mm, okay i think i answered all the questions yeah okay let me break that down really quickly probably three five to six and then i have to go guys my hour is up already so proverbs three I would love to continue, but I have ch I have other responsibilities. I have to go pick up my children. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Proverbs 3. Okay. Okay. So Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So what I get from this is... <laughs> guys... This is what I was talking about. The topic was the will of the Father. When you trust God, you go into His will. Whatever He's told you to do, you do that. When He says, today, don't do a video. All right, Lord, no video today. I don't know why, but that's fine. When He says, uh, apply for this house or whatever, just do that. When you, you trust Him to the point where whatever He tells you to do, you do. You do whatever he tells because he will never give you the entire picture. God does not give you the entire picture. He gives you step-by-step -step instructions. And once you follow that, he, he gives you more and more and more and more and more. That's how he is. So trust the Lord with all your heart means you can trust him. That even if right now you're wallowing in pain because your ex beat you up or something, you trust him that he can heal your soul. Like Psalms 23 verse 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Like, Lord, I'm hurting, I'm broken, I'm bruised. But I know that Psalms 23 verse 3 says, you are the restorer of the soul. Restore my soul, Lord. And then you trust him that you would do that. So you don't run to a psychic or a medium going, hey, uh, let me get my ex back. Let me send the biggest, let me give you $20,000 and send the biggest curse I can on him. People do that, y'all. People spend $20,000 to curse other people. It's crazy. I'm like, you could, you could have just bought a new car. 
that's that's wild but that's what they do so you trust me all your heart with give it to him trust him whatever you have going on give it to him and trust him with that right lean not on your own understanding because guys our understanding is faulty uh, just like miss mr i forget his name but he was over here talking about whatever he was talking about that's faulty understanding god is all-knowing god knows everything so when you when you don't lean your own understanding that means you're leaning on the rock of ages so god jesus christ is a rock so right so instead of like walking on sand sinking sand you're walking on the rock of ages you're not going to sink you're going to be taken care of and protected now six says in all your ways acknowledge him in all your ways acknowledge him. he would so i love this one i love this one i, I think you know because i already did like i want to say two verses on that in all your ways acknowledge him so this for me means that whatever i'm going to do if it's a big decision big decision i ask god to come into that decision i invite god into that decision which is why i'm gonna go back to the vaccine i asked god should i get this vaccine and he said no and he showed me why it was a no right um when i was going to uh what was it when I when my placenta was blocking my cervix and I want a natural birth, I asked God, "How can I take care of this?" And He showed me go to the prayer mountain and pray. I went to the prayer mountain and prayed. So like He, he would direct your path. It literally tells you, okay, you need to pray. You need to focus on praying and breaking all these curses. But here is where you can break this because at the prayer mountain, everyone is just fasting and praying there i was pregnant i couldn't fast i couldn't pray i could have i could pray but i could not fast so i was around people that were all praying and all fasting the mountain was just on fire for god so i was in the presence of god in order for him to be able to do that miracle for me and even though the miracle did not happen at the mountain in south korea it happened the week the week after i came back from south korea where you know i was praying on the phone my mother going hey i need you to come in you know come in agreement with me according to matthew 18 19 and she did that and guys i tell you the truth right now i'm not like god is my witness i felt a, a tug in my belly and my pleasant my, my placenta literally moved out of the way from my cervix it moved out of the way why because god gave me directions he shall direct your path means you take whatever is bothering you to him and he'll guide you on how to navigate that situation in your life. And that's what he's been doing for me. God, I went at your birth. I want to have this child. I'm medicated like the first one. I don't want a cesarean. I don't like meds. I don't like pain. I don't like any of that. He knows I don't like pain. He knows I don't like any of that. I don't do well with meds. I tell him I will knock me out for like a day. Like legit out. And I'm like, whew so he knew my heart's desire and because i could i could like god you say in your word you shall direct my path direct me on how i can navigate this situation he sent me to korea i went to korea i was pregnant whatever let's go to korea let's pray let's pray let's pray come back you see what i'm saying he directs your path acknowledge him in all your ways you need to remember what he has done for you prior. So I would say, God, you helped me to get into an, um, the nursing school without me even like applying once. Apparently, I didn't know nursing school it takes like four or five tries to get into. I had no idea, y'all, because I just got in the first try, right? And I passed the entrance exam, the first try, like all these things. And my God, the God who did all that for me, I found out the horror of it once i was in nursing school i was like oh my god it took me four tries it took me five tries it took me da, da. i'm like what i'm like the god who gave me all of that with no struggle is a god who can get me get this person person to move out of the way so i can have this child unmedicated and um naturally in all your ways acknowledge him in all your ways now that does not mean like god what color shoes should i wear today no because you you he gave us brains and free will you could just get a wear blue if you feel like wearing a blue shirt or if you feel like wearing a blue shoes whatever right but in things that are like serious like i invite him like if i'm gonna which summer camp should my son go to you know um which daycare should my son go to which school should my son go to? Where should I apply for this? Where should I apply for that? He is part of that process. I hope that, that helps. 
Chaz V8. So you were a Christian, you couldn't find evidence to support it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I feel like I need to talk to you, but I have to go. So Chav V3, can you just go on my page and look at some videos? If not, just add me and I'll add you and hope no, I don't even know. I don't know how to help you. All I can say is I can bind up the spirits that are availing you from seeing the love of Christ for you. If you want me to pray for you, I can. But only if you want, because I don't know you. Uh -huh. Exactly. You can't get full of yourself. Basically, realizing that you are reliant on God. You rely on God for survival. Like, you can't make it out here on your own, y'all. I'll tell you that much right now. You cannot make it out here on your own. Okay? There's too much, especially now. Especially now. You can't make it out here on your own. So the proverb is saying just rely on God. Like, God, um, I need this or I need that. It not even needs you guys. Literally, I talk to him about anything. Because I don't, you get to a point where you no longer have needs. You don't go to God with requests. You go to God with, I just want to say thank you so much that the weather is perfect. That I have an AC in this car. That I got out early enough to do a live. Um, that I, I had a great day at work acknowledgement all your ways like you're just thankful like your spirit is always in thankfulness of god for god i hope that makes sense yes trusting god mm -hmm. yeah people had a hard time getting into nursing school like medical school pharmacy school nursing school is a struggle for people I had no idea guys i just applied i got in i went to my entrance exam i just i did the exam i i passed it you know i'm just like once i got in people had horror stories like oh my god how many tries it was almost like they were competing to see how many tries it took certain people like okay so how many times did you try i'm like what are you talking about to get in i'm like once they're like what so that's how i found out that it was hard to get in because i didn't come in with a competition i just came in <laughs> Daphne Rose, I am my pleasure, my pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Divine Dot Disruption. Yeah, like I'm telling you, when you rely on Jesus Christ and you are like, God, I've come to the end of myself. I I'm realizing that I need you more than I thought I needed you, your life falls in place. Your life becomes easier. Like, I can see a person with certain spirits like a mile away. I'm like, okay, <laughs> no, we're not doing this today. Let's go down. It's, I used, to, before it used to be like medical diagnosis. I would see people and just medically diagnose them. Now I walk down and, and like spiritually diagnose them with what spirit is influencing them. It's, it's amazing. Uh, Mazzettini, I can't, I'm not accepting any loves. I'm literally getting off this live in like a minute. I am so sorry because you guys like to debate like i am here to follow scripture i don't want to debate scripture well no that's an excellent question would god tell someone to divorce a spouse so god hates divorce there is there are grounds where god is like it's yeah you can leave someone but god hates divorce now that person has to really be hearing from god like like god told me to divorce my spouse and god God will use scripture to backing up that direction. So that person will really have to say, God told me to do this. This is the scripture backing that up. God doesn't just speak randomly like that. He uses his word to back up his word because his word becomes, has to be fulfilled. So generally when people do that, it's out of selfishness. They want to divorce somebody so they can go, go with somebody else. But they, they want to put God in that mess. God is on a, y'all. God is not an author of confusion. God is not an author of confusion. That is the devil himself. He brings up confusion. Now, if that person is a witch, God can very much, very much tell you, this person's going to kill you one day. You need to pack up your stuff and leave. Yes, that has happened. But it is, if that person doesn't have, is not like sold out to the demonic. Because some people who have gone to the demonic have decided like that's it. They're not going to go to God. They've, hard in their heart so much that they've like we're never going to god right 
in that case god will give you the yes go ahead and you know but those those chances like those instances are very rare they're very rare no you won't win girl um oh mimi do something you want every day do something you want every single day you're gonna be fine 91 is for you something one's for you hallelujah thumbib. yes guys if you have jesus christ it's easy like i tell people like people oh my god nursing school was so hard i'm like nursing school was very easy for me i was tutoring my classmates because i had jesus christ i wasn't as um fervent i wasn't as dedicated i hadn't relinquished my will however i i didn't hear him i was like i didn't hear him i wasn't as in it but I was lukewarm, but I didn't know how to find Jesus because the churches I was going to never really showed you anything. I had to, I didn't have the desire to read the Bible. <sighs> but I'm so glad your brother's doing well because honestly, when God sees your heart, God saw my heart. It's like, yeah, she just needs somebody to direct her on how to find the scriptures, on how to search the scriptures. That's why I was able to do it with like no problem. Like my husband's like you go to medical school i was like no nah, i don't want to be in medical school for forever but all that stuff was easy for me but it was all god it wasn't me it was jesus christ himself exactly there are marriages that were never ordained by god that were fashioned by the demons in order to facilitate a divorce for that family because that family um somebody did something in the altar where they're going to all end up in like in divorcees or separation so demons have to and either make sure you don't get married or send somebody that will end up in a divorce so that's how those that's how like the not god ordained marriages come about there are demons literally sending the person who's rightfully yours to divorce you at some point He doesn't want to be married, but wants, but wants you to leave so he can blame you for it? Okay, so I was, uh, Miss Blonova, I would suggest you fast. Go on a fast and really seek the face of God. Seek the face of God because um, there is more to it than just them saying, I don't want to be married to you anymore. I want you to leave. There's more to it. Seek the face of God and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal his heart, your spouse's heart to you. Because then Holy Spirit will literally reveal where there's another person in the in the in the picture, other children in the picture. He will tell you exactly what's going on. And when he tells you what's going on, ask him once like, so once he tells you what's going on, ask him for guidance on what to do next. And when he tells you what to do next, be ready for that. Like be ready for it. And then just ask him to restore your soul. Whatever it is. Psalms twenty three verse three. He restores my soul. Guys, I like how the <laughs> Holy Spirit is so amazing. He's giving me like a array. But yeah, so um, do a fast. Do a fast. Um, if you have never fasted before, try it from like midnight to like noon or midnight to like 2 p.m. And just asking God, like just reading the Bible and just saying, God, I just need you to give me guidance on this particular thing. He won't leave you abandoned. He will guide you and he will tell you what is really going on. Because there's more to it than him just saying, um, I don't want to be married to you anymore. I need you to leave. There's more to it. There's underlying issues and factors. And he's not saying that. So it, when you leave, he's going to be able to tell your family that you're the one who left the marriage, not him. And then happily, uh, you know, hop off, skip off and marry somebody else. So to be in the will of God for your life, because this entire life is about the will of God for our lives. Take it to God and ask him. Please ask him. And then Joel 2, 25 to 26 is about restoration. Like God will restore marriages. If it's God's will, and usually God's will is for us. Because some people really are like just fashioned to come and destroy us. I'm telling y'all, I was supposed to leave a few seconds ago, but um, I dated somebody that was literally fashioned from the pits of hell to come and destroy my life. Literally. And I didn't understand that because I was so young. I was 18. But now I understand like why I look back. I'm like, wow, if God had not intervened, if God had not been like, even then it was convicting me really strongly. It was like, no, don't do this with that person. No, don't do this. But this person literally was sent from the pits of hell to destroy me. And there's people like that. The devil will see your gift. I'm like, that gift is going to help people. If I can just torment her and keep her in this place right here, 
she would never be able to even like come up for air almost like you're in a pool you're just like drowning come up for air come out of those weeds and be like okay what's going on in my life what am i supposed to be what's my purpose what's my gift you're so like bamboozled by this person and what they're doing to you you can't even like look up to like enjoy nature go out to nature like take a walk take a hike go out and talk to god like sincerely talk to god and he'll guide you step by step and he will let you know what happened i'm telling you like god will show you if you seek him you'll find him if you need qu answers questions answered he will show you like he showed me things where i'm like whoo yeah okay jesus fills this gap amen oh thank you fam babe i pray blessings on your brother he's gonna excel he's gonna do really good hi miss sharon i am so sorry girl i'm about to leave so um yeah <laughs> that's what i was saying like i don't know how the light is coming in because i'm like under a tree but god is amazing god is good yeah so miss blonova please um <sighs> do that first do the fasting first do the fasting first and then once you're done fasting do at least a week of fasting then if you're still uh, feeling pushback like you still need answers contact me i can we can talk and i can pray for you by the power of the holy spirit girl we'll get through that that's no problem marriage is like the biggest threat to the kingdom of darkness guys marriage is the biggest threat to the kingdom of darkness because when there is marriage when there's stability when you are stable in your marriage you can do the will of the father the doors are closed so if you're married make sure you pray for your marriage okay whatever you have pray for it i see my marriage and not just like not like religiously, just kind of like, I feel, I seal my marriage with the blood of Jesus Christ. A wall of fire around my marriage. A wall of fire around my child in the name of Jesus. Just like you put on the spiritual arm of God every single day. Put a spiritual arm of God on your marriage every single day. Remember I told you guys it's a body? Put this, like dress it up y'all. Dress it up. When your marriage is stable, when you are perfectly content and happy, when your marriage is going the way God intended for it to go, the will of the Father is for you to be happy and wholesome, you're going to be able to walk in His will. You're going to be able to do your purpose on this earth and shame the devil. Okay? Love you guys. I have to go. Um, you are blessed. I pray blessings upon you. I pray that the Holy Spirit opens your eyes to how much He loves you. Y'all, He loves you so much. And once you walk in his will, no demon can touch you. Guys, like, just just bask in his love, okay? Just bask in his love for you. Trust him because he loves you. Like, he really loves y'all. I'm telling you he loves you because I'm here. I would never, ever in my wildest dreams thought I'd be on TikTok. He loves you that much. We went back and forth for a while, but he won because I was like, you know what, God? I'm tired of saying no to you. My, your will be done, not my will. I relinquish my will to him. And that's why I'm here. Relinquish your will. Whatever he wants you to do, just do it. Because you're going to get so much happiness and joy in your heart. You won't be able to contain yourself. All right. Bye.